Well, my next guest is joining forces with Oklahoma Senator Mark Wayne Mullen in introducing a National Stand Your Ground Act of 2023. Now, this is deeply personal to me, given that I was the victim of six assailants breaking into my house when I lived in Virginia Beach. I had to go to court to defend myself after defending my home, my own home. Now, the proposed law states, quote, a person is justified in using, threatening, or attempting to use deadly force if he or she, only two genders, reasonably believes that using, threatening, or attempting to use such force is necessary to prevent imminent death or great bodily harm to himself or herself to or another to prevent the Im uh, imminent commission of a forcible felony. Joining me now is the man sponsoring this, Florida Congressman Matt Gates. Congressman, appreciate you being here. Uh, thanks for having me. And if you're watching this interview from a blue state, the chances are you probably have a legal duty to retreat if someone encounters you on the street or in a park or on a beach and attempts to commit a forcible felony against you. And I think that's crazy. The duty to retreat is one that I believe we should extinguish nationwide. In Florida, where we have a stand your ground law, we actually put the law on the side of the victim not on the side of the attacker. Yeah, noble concept there, Congressman. But like I said, this is you know, deeply personal to me. I lived, I lived in Virginia Beach at Had Castle Doctrine at the time, but I, uh, I live in the Socialist Republic of Connecticut now. If somebody breaks into my house and I have my kids sleeping upstairs, I have to retreat from my house. I cannot prevent that person from coming further into my home because I have the duty to retreat. I don't think people understand how significant is this? Well, it could be deadly because if you miscalculate a decision and you attempt a retreat and you fail, that could result in the death of a loved one, a family member, even yourself. And also, if you miscalculate in one of these blue jurisdictions that require someone to retreat and you it commit a, an act of self-defense, you can go bankrupt, you can be arrested, you can be forced to have to defend this conduct forever. And that's not what should happen. The common law has got it wrong here. If someone is intending to commit a forcible felony on you, a, a battery that is aggravated, a sexual assault, a rape, people ought to be able to fight back. You know, mm -hmm. we found a lot of women coming to support this cause because they don't want to ever think that if they're out in some parking lot and someone is lurking behind them and makes an effort to try to harm them, that they would have to try to run before right. utilizing force to repel that attack. Yeah, but the other thing, Congressman, is that when you have things like this, like, look, I'm, I, I, the deck is stacked against me. I'm a 250-pound Navy SEAL. If I defend myself, even if somebody comes at me with a knife, I have to have the duty to retreat. But how much is this retreating duty discouraging good Samaritans from stepping in when cops aren't around? Yeah, I believe that you should have no duty to retreat even in the defense of others if that person is at risk of being killed in, in the absence. And you're right, we've become such a legalistic society. We've lost some common sense around the fact that if someone's acting to protect another, they ought to be protected by the law. We saw this recent case in the subway in New York that seems to have everybody mm -hmm. so worked up. But how are you supposed to know in that situation that someone who's harassing passengers, who's had over 40 arrests, uh, isn't going to engage in something deadly? Yeah. when they're accosting people. And so we don't want to see loss of life under any circumstance, but we need to vigorously uh, protect the right of self-defense, especially in these times where in blue jurisdictions they're treating the jail like a turnstile. Right. You know, and, and with this legislation, Congressman, I'd bet my bottom dollar that people will stop messing around if they think they can get hit back. Congressman Matt Gates, we appreciate you, you know being what? Here. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. In Florida, it does keep. In Florida, our stand your ground laws do keep everybody cordial and friendly. That's and civilized society is the goal. Thank you, Congressman. <laughs> Thank All you. Right. Well, the chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff, Mark Milley's term, is set to expire in September, thankfully. And according to reports, President Biden is expected to nominate General Charles Q. Brown, the head of the Air Force, as his replacement. Joining me now, Brigadier General, U.S. Air Force and Newsmax contributor, Blaine Holt. All right, General, first question, how well do you know General Brown? 
You know, I know him pretty well. Uh, I knew him as a younger officer. He was uh, the aide to uh, General Fogelman, our chief of staff, then at the time, a man that I revere to this day. Uh, so he's had great tutelage. Uh, General Brown has had great mentors all throughout. Very talented uh, fighter pilot. Rose to command, commanded our air forces uh, uh, in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I think everybody had a lot of hope when he became chief of the Air Force that he'd really hunker down on mission focus. Unfortunately, that has not been the case, whether it's of his own volition or through the administration. But we've seen an Air Force turn woke, and I think he's going to be facing a buzzsaw on the Hill during confirmation hearings. He's going to have to answer for that and what his vision for uh, our next generation military is going to be. You know, honestly, though, like, look, th now that he's going to be elevated or, or attempting to be elevated to chairman of Joint Chief of Staff, it's a major role. Do you think, I mean, as a general yourself, you know, these flag officers get in there and very few of them raise their hand when something's wrong. Do you think he has the courage to raise his hand and say, hold up, guys, hold up. Let's think this through. There has never been a time in our officer corps more for moral courage than we have right now. And although we have promotion systems that have far too much nepotism to them, um, General Brown has a golden opportunity here to step into that role, knowing that there is no uniform in the nation higher than his, and he could he could actually set things right. He could uh, give the best advice to uh, the President of the United States and the Secretary of Defense, and we're all hoping that he does that. He could do an about face here on this yeah. DEI nonsense. I, I really hope so, and I, I, you know, judging by your your assessment of his character, I'm 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 actually optimistic about it, General Holt. I am too. I'm going to remain that way. Yeah. Well, I appreciate being here, sir. Great to be with you. All right. Coming up, identity politics have played a huge role in the incompetence and misconduct that we're seeing now from even elected officials. Our latest threat assessment is next. From Frontline comes back.